Celtic Myths and Legends by T.W. Rolison, Chapter 8, Myths and Tales of the Cymric People, Gallic and Continental Romance. In many respects, the Irish Celt anticipated the idea of these romances, the lofty courtesy shown to each other by enemies, the fantastic pride which forbade a warrior to take advantage of a wounded adversary, the extreme punctadillo with which the duties or observances proper to each man's caste or station were observed, all this tone of thought and feeling, which would seem so strange to us if we met an instance of it in classical, in classical literature, would seem quite familiar and natural in the continental romances of the twelfth and later centuries, centuries earlier than it was a marked feature in Gallic literature, yet in the Irish romances whether Oltanian or Ushinic. The element which has since been considered the most essential motive in a romantic tale is almost entirely lacking. Yet, this is the, ele oh, this is the element of love, or rather, woman worship. Well, again, I wouldn't quite like those terms, and... Um, respect and pride are different further back, but anyways, the continental fabulous felt that he could do nothing without this motive of action, but the lady love of the English, France, French, or German knight, whose favor he wore, for whose grace he endured infinite hardship and peril, does not meet us in Gallic literature. It would have seemed absurd to the Irish Celt to make the plot of a serious story hinge on the kind of passion with which the medieval Dulcina Dulcine inspired her faithful knight in the two most famous and popular of the Gallic love tales, the tale of Deirdre and the pursuit of Dermot and Grania. The women are the wooers and the men are most reluctant to commit to what they know to be the folly of yielding to them. Now this romance chivalric kind of love, which idealized women into almost as a goddess, this made the service of this lady a sacred duty to the knight. Though it never reached in Wales, the height which it did in continental and English romances, it is yet certainly discernible there. Well, a lot of religions, without actually worshipping females, consider it a sacred duty to do duty to wife and mother and sister. And we can trace it in Kilweh and Olwen, which is comparatively an ancient tale. It is well developed in latter stories like Peridur and the Lady of the Fountain. It is a symptom of the extent to which in comparison with the Irish, Welsh literature had lost its pure Celtic strain and become affected, I do not, of course, say to its loss by foreign influences.